Hi, this is Dane Stevens with your Solutions Tip of the Week. This is the second in the series about staying connected. And in this segment we're going to talk about staying connected physically. You cannot separate the body from the mind from the spirit. And we're going to talk about today how they are intertwined, how they are connected. And how it's important to be aligned and in tune with your physical body. You can't separate the body from the mind from the spirit. And how that works, for one, is when we raise our energy, when we uh, move our physical body and raise our energy level, the mind slows down. When the mind slows down, the spirit comes alive. That's just what happens. So when we do that dirty word called exercise, it automatically slows our mind down. It's a great coping skill in that way. It also opens up the spirit and allows our higher self, our spirit, to come forth. There's a number of different aspects about the body that are so important to know. And one is the body can't lie. David Hawkins wrote a great book called Power vs. Force. And the whole book is the study of how the body will guide you, how the body can't lie. When you're tuned into your body and you pay attention to what feels good, what doesn't feel good, what feels right, what feels wrong, it will guide you. It knows. The body is intelligence. And the body is our guidance system. That's where our guidance system is. It's in how we feel. And taking that a step further, how are we successful? What's the ultimate in success? Feeling good, yes? So, and where do we feel? In our bodies. So our body is such a huge key. We can't ignore that part of our growth, that part of our spiritual growth, that part of our mental, emotional growth. The body, mind, and spirit are connected. You cannot separate them. So physically, how do we stay connected physically? There are three aspects to our physical health. We have our, have our cardiovascular health, which is heart and lungs. We have the resistance or strength training, which is muscles. And we have stretching, which is really not an option, as that's how you tune into and also balance your body. So for cardiovascular activity, first of all, think of this as a journey in self-discovery as for what works for you. What do you like to do? So for me, I've discovered that running in the morning before I meditate works so well because right after the run I go into meditation, I'm already right there because of the repetition of breathing and moving. My mind is slowed down, you got that repetition of breathing, so I just really slip into my meditation right away. That works for me. So find out what works for you. Mine is in the morning, so find out the time, find out what works for you, and what you like. What do you like to do that raises your energy? Do you like to swim? Do you like to bike? Do you like to run? Sex? Whatever raises your heart rate, find out what raises your heart rate and do that three times a week for at least 30 minutes a time and that will really start to open up and clean out your system and clean out your mind in that way because it slows the mind down. So use it as a tool for your cardiovascular training. The second one is resistance or strength training. One of the things I've learned in being a trainer and a coach is that strength is strength is strength is strength. And when you get strong in one area of your life, it tends to blend into and affect other areas of your life. So when you get stronger physically, automatically that will affect the different areas of your life that, you're, that are going on for you right now, whether it be your career, whether it be relationship, whether it be your hobbies, or whatever it is. It will affect your strength as well as it will affect your strength mentally and emotionally. So doing the strength training or strengthening yourself affects all areas of your life. So think of it in the way of opening yourself up to, to be stronger in all areas of your life. And once again, when you go further than you think you could or you go further than you did last time, that says something to yourself and your spirit comes alive. You become more of who you really are. The third one is stretching. And stretching is not an option. Uh, yoga is an absolute science which involves stretching. Yoga actually opens up the, the energy centers in your body, so it's a, a, a magical and a wonderful experience. But I want to talk about stretching because I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding there. 
When we stretch, we want to hold the stretch for at least 30 seconds or longer. We have a mechanism in our muscles that keeps tension on the muscles. It will let go at approximately 30 seconds. Slightly different for different people, of course. But when you hold it long enough, you will literally feel the muscle fibers come apart. So you need to hold it and let it come apart. And when I say stretch a muscle, you're actually not stretching it. You're letting it lengthen out. So don't go to a place where until it hurts. If it hurts, that's your body saying too much. Listen to your body and go just beyond the normal range of motion before pain and let the muscles lengthen out. So there's your soul food, is to get in touch with your body. Use this as a great journey in, in self-discovery. And when you exercise, you can't help but feel good. It raises the energy in your body and it creates endorphins, which are like positive cells in your body. So go out and move and make yourself feel good. And use this to make yourself feel better in all areas of your life and do better in all areas of your life. This is Dane Stevens with your Soul Solutions Tip of the Week. Make it a great week. Thank you.